Hey everyone, so welcome back to the third episode of Japanese Business Timer with Rochelle Karp and Mihiko Simon back once again. And this week the topic is presented to you by、uh, Isabella1680, who had a great topic. Of, and, and let's face it, this is a YouTube show, we can say what we want. What, happen, what happens when shit happens? Right. When shit, when shit goes down, and you don't have to say it, I'm sorry, I'll, I'll do this worry. <laughs> when shit happens, when it hits the fan, and everyone's standing around and getting hit, and it's going everywhere, well, what happens in Japan? What、It's, do Japanese do, or what do they expect each other to do? I, I want to find out, so, so hang around. Okay, so this is a, it's a fantastic topic because this is one of the quintessential areas where, particularly if you take the Western, I'd say, I say Western, but American、mm-hmm. approach to, to crisis management, to a disaster sort of happening. And Japan, I mean, they're very different. The whole approaches, reactions, everything, and they're almost, I think, probably mutually incomprehensible. So I could imagine this is kind、right. of fascinating. So the question, I guess, is in Japan what happens in Japan when、right. shit happens?、So, okay. Well, Japanese do this thing called Hansei. Hansei. My、and、wife says I, I never do that enough. <laughs> yes, exactly. Pro- I, 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 I'm guessing that a lot of Japanese buses with non Japanese buses say that, right? Yes. It is the thing that drives Japanese most crazy about people from other countries. And、uh, lack of Hansei. Lack of Hansei. <laughs> and when I'm doing seminars, I, you know, at the beginning of every seminar, I always do some sort of discussion exercise to kind of figure out where the、yeah. uh, participants are at, what's on their minds.、Yeah. And you know, when I'm asking Japanese, what's most challenging for you about working with Americans, for example,、yeah. this will come up every single time in some form、yeah. in terms of, well, Americans don't admit their own faults. Americans are always making excuses. Americans are always trying to place the blame on other people. Americans are always trying to explain away their problems. They don't say, I'm sorry. And this is all about not doing this Hansei thing. Yeah, so, so Hansei, for, for those who don't know the term, I understand the term as being self reflection. Uh, well, what's, the, what's the definition you it's, use? Yeah, that's, that's a, it's, there's not a really perfect word in English, but、yeah. it's looking back on what you've done. Yeah. And feeling badly that it didn't go as well as it could have, and thinking back about, well, how could I have done things better? So it's reflection, and yeah, it's, it's kind of got some, rem- I, I have some remorse in there mixed in. As a married person,、um, <laughs> I, the way I understand the term, or the way, the way I, I, I became acquainted with the term, is it's, it's like uh, uh, literally when, when a parent is telling off a child. Think about what you've done. Yes, yes. <laughs> Hansei about, Shiro. That's right. right. That's literally getting the kid to go back. And, you know, this kid doesn't even realize what they did wrong. Go back, think about what you did wrong, come back and show me that you understand why it was wrong and say that you're sorry. Basically, that's it. Yeah. That, and that's what Japanese do with adults as well. And、yes. they expect people、it、to do that、stops. in business situations. <laughs> in business situations as well, you're expected、yeah. to do that.、Yeah. And what happens is, is、uh, particularly in American culture, because we're very legalistic. We don't like to say, I'm sorry.、Yeah. Because if we say, I'm sorry,、Just、it means、money. that we're at fault. And yeah, when someone's going to sue us or someone's, we're going to get punished or something bad's going to happen. So we automatically go into self defense mode.、Yeah. And we start to try and explain away the problem.、Yeah. And like, oh, I was late for work, but there was this big traffic jam. You know,、yeah. we're, we're some other thing other than us that we want to put the emphasis on rather than, well, you know, I could have left earlier, right? And you know what? This also links with、uh, a, 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 that conversation. I was late for work, but there was a traffic jam. I, I've, I've done this. I've, I've been to work and I was five minutes late. I'm sorry, I was late for、uh, um, the trains were stopped. And this is where another topic, which we will get to on a future episode about passive aggression from Japanese people,、right. uh, the, passive aggression, the passive aggressive reaction of my boss, but that everyone said was, well, you should have caught an earlier train and accounted for the possibility. That、right. trains sometimes stop. Right, you right, shouldn't right, be getting、yes. here five minutes before. You should be getting here thirty minutes before. Right. Which left me flabbergasted, but, and it was kind of passive aggressive. But it's kind of what everyone else was doing. But that's what but everyone that does. Hansei, but that、it. is, but that is what Japanese expect, and that's what that's they what expect they of each other. They, that's what they want you to say. They want they, me to say, I, I, "I was late today because the train was late." In future, I'll make sure this doesn't happen again by catching an earlier train. Right. Exactly. They want to know what you are going to do <laughs> to prevent this problem, even、yeah. if the problem was really something that you didn't cause. A meteor could have、right. could have hit the hit the nation, and you've still got. Explain what you're going to do for next time a meteor strikes. Exactly. Yes. Which, which、um, in, in some respect, you could say it sounds a, to a Westerner, it looks a little bit childish and a little bit sort of unnecessary.、Mm-hmm. But at the same time, I think it's also a really 
when it's applied, right. which is always after something has happened. Exactly. <laughs> but it is an amazingly powerful, it's a really fascinating process, and, mm-hmm. and it, it causes people talk about the safety culture in Japan. Right. Which, again, can be lax until there's been a, a prompt. But you take, like, the tsunami and the nuclear accident and everything like that. Japan already had reasonably strict uh, nuclear safety standards. But after that tsunami thing, mm-hmm. you know, all the safety standards were multiplied by 10 to right. the extent that no plant in Japan meets them at the moment. But, yeah, this is all part of the Hansei, trying to think, right. well, what happens if a, you know, if a 100-foot tsunami hits us after a magnitude 9 quake, which everyone would have said would have been a ridiculous scenario before, but it's the Hansei, the whole process of those new standards was a it's Hansei where, process. Where you think back and say, how do we make sure this never happens again? Yeah. What things could be changed and improved? Yeah. And uh, let me give you an example. I'll just give you a story that um, was relayed to me by one of my clients. Yeah. And this client used to work for a contract research organization in the pharmaceutical industry, yeah. which means they had a room in full of cages of little white rats yeah. that they were injecting with whatever substance yeah. um, to prepare the report and they had a Japanese client yeah. and one day the one of the techs was cleaning the cages and one of the rats got out yeah. and the tech was trying to find the rat yeah. and she was kind of clumsy and stepped on it which is bad because you've lost a data point besides the fact it's gross but you know you've <laughs> lost a data point and when you're doing this that is a really big problem in a clinical research study yeah so this guy he had worked with Japanese a lot and he yeah. said to the whole team you know, we have to tell this to the client. They're not going to be happy. But, you know, I've dealt with Japanese before. I know what to do. Yeah. And he did the picture-perfect thing. Yeah. So he started a letter and he said, I'm, something terrible has happened. We all feel really badly about it and we deeply apologize. We're very, very sorry. Yeah. And then factual, here's what happened. Yeah. And then we have had a lot of discussion here to make sure the, uh, to think about ways to make sure this will never happen again. Right. And so we are going to put in place a new policy that if ever a rat gets loose from one of the cages, that you may not move your feet unless <laughs> you are looking at your feet. Oh, so that is the perfect, that is the perfect scenario. I mean, that again, I see yeah. over and over of a disaster happening, the reflexive, overly apologetic letter, which, which for, for, I've done legal jobs in the past where your job is to stop people apologizing too much. Right, right, right. Uh, but uh, but the overly apo- immediately wanting to apologize and set out the full analysis of these are all the things that I did wrong. Right, right. That I'm very sorry for, and this is how we're going to make sure it never happens again. Right. That is the perfect business letter. There are it was templates. perfect. There are templates. And, and the thing, and this was a situation where the customer, like for example, if it was an American customer, would yeah. have just gone ballistic. Yeah. I mean, it's really bad. Yeah. But when they sent this letter, the Japanese customer accepted it very calmly. So it was extremely effective. Yeah. This was in, so this happened in America. It happened in America. So this is an American who had figured out a really effective way to deal with Japanese. Wow. A, yeah. An American person came up with that letter. Yes. But wow. he had worked with Japanese for a long time. Yeah, but I yeah, was yeah. very impressed, yes. Yeah. But well, that's a, perfect. That's yeah, a model letter. It is letter. perfect. It's a model letter. That's what I'm saying. I mean, that's an example. When I say it's perfect, my job is to stop people sending letters like that. But, but, yeah. yes. but it's perfect with, <laughs> but it had did what culturally, it needed to do culturally for the Japanese. Yeah. And he averted a situation where the Japanese could have just gone crazy and, and been really, really upset. You know, there's a, there's a, I, I, I don't like this movie. It's a terrible movie, uh, Rising Sun. Oh, yeah. It's a terrible movie. It is terrible. It's terrible, and don't watch it. But there is one line in it where Sean Connery talks with uh, uh, Wesley Snipes. Snipes. And he talks about this, actually, what happens when stuff happens. And he says, um, since since uh, since we're talking about shit happening, I'm going to quote the line uh, exactly as it was said. Whenever Whenever something, whenever shit happens in America, everyone's looking for who fucked up. Who fucked up? You know, in Japan, they don't. They don't waste their time looking for who fucked up. They just figure out what happened and they fix it. <laughs> and their way is better. Uh, I love that line. And, and that, is, there, that, is what, that, is a, that is the only line in the entire 90 minutes of Rising Sun that is worth watching. The rest of it you true. should just dis- disregard. Yeah. But that's actually, it's actually well, that is a, that is a very Japanophilic, J- Japanophile, so, you know, summary Wait, of that concept. But that is kind of it. Yeah. When you have a legalistic culture, you're so afraid of being blamed or you're so, you're so jumping to put the blame on someone else or figure right. out where the blame is. And again, I work in a multinational company where when there's a disaster, my whole mindset, which is from me in Japan, is, okay, let's figure out what happened and let's figure out how to fix it. For me, it's how to fix it. Right. And, how, and then after that, figure out how, how to make sure this doesn't happen again. Right. But when you go on a call with angry people down phone lines in other countries, what they want to know is who's responsible? And how are they going to be made? And in the end of the day, I agree with uh, with uh, Sean Connery. Um, in the end of the day, after all is said and done, you know, bozo, sure, you know, 
do whatever, punish them, right. whatever. But that's not the first thing that you do. The first thing you do is you fix it. You fix it. And we also, you, you acknowledge that the person yeah. had an unpleasant experience. Yeah. And you try and make them feel well, better. Right. But so many times in the United States, we skip that because, again, people are afraid of getting sued. Yeah. And, or they're afraid of getting fired. Yeah. And so people immediately go into this mode where they are explaining things away. Yeah. And, you know, maybe it's because some of my thinking has become very Japanese, but I find myself in situations in the U.S. where it starts to drive me crazy, too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, it isn't. I mean, you're right. It, it, it's. An, it, I, I think the the American reaction of the, the the blame and avoiding blame is more counterintuitive, actually, than the, I think the Japanese approach to it. There is this thing that somehow there is a there is a perception that oh, Japanese, you know, they don't want to sort everything. You take, uh, for example, the Minamata case, or famous sort of uh, environmental disasters, and right. everyone talks about how the government protected Chiso, the company that right. did that. And, and this is like the quintessential, the Japanese government being cozy, people covering it up, friends like Toshiba, like there's yeah, a problem, yeah. everyone tries to cooperate to fix it. And this is just an old boys club and trying to avoid, you know, it's trying to um, shield people from responsibility and be unaccountable. We have a big, we, we put a lot of uh, stock in the West on accountability. Right. And, and when you're reading this in a book or in a newspaper in America, it looks like, oh, Japan's a country of just people who try to hide in groups and avoid responsibility. Mm -hmm. and I understand that perception. But when you come here, and my first work site was in the company that Chiso, the company that caused the Minamata disaster, became. And they had they, they had like a a, 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 a a work employer list of something like 40% disabled people from Minamata town. Oh, people wow. who wouldn't be able to get jobs anyway. Right, right, yeah. And so, and you sort of, as I worked it, I started to realize, okay, the government shielded them from a massive lawsuit that would have crushed their company. But in exchange for their company surviving, they kind of had to employ and provide uh, medical insurance for and look after and take responsibility right. for the town. And that doesn't get in the papers, mm. but it's a fundamentally different approach. Rather right. than trying to figure out, there's a person who's responsible, hang him. Right. Um, there actually, there, there is buried in, granted, there was some avoidance of responsibility and some shielding, but there is also this whole thing about, um, you know, figuring out, well, this is a terrible problem. What are the steps we need to take to fix it? Right. Which and isn't to say that, I mean, there were still terrible things with Minamata. The government actually right. blocked people from suing and then getting compensated. There was terrible things with that, yeah. but, but it's just the whole approach is different. It's not right. they don't go on a witch hunt. They go on right. to a fix it. Right. And, and what and what I think happens in Japan then is because people know you know they have for the most part job security, and they know that no one's yeah. going to come on a whips witch hunt. It makes people better able to be forthright about problems. Mm. You know, I've I've heard this similar story a lot of times um, from a lot of cl ah. Japanese clients in the U.S. where in the factory let's say that something gets messed up. Yeah. Something gets done wrong and like, for example, a, a, a die in a factory, really expensive piece of equipment gets damaged. Yeah. And the Japanese um, you know, plant manager is like, go, you know, wants to know, well, well, who caused this? What happened? Yeah. And no one will say who did it. Yeah. Because the Americans are all thinking, well, we don't want our buddy to get fired. Yeah. And the Japanese are like, we're not going to fire you. We just want to figure out how we can like not mess up other pieces of equipment. Oh, yes and right? no. Uh, that's that's maybe true to a point, but there is definitely, again, having having dealt as a troubleshooter on, on issues like this, there. I mean, again, just having to write that letter, just the internal kind of humiliation, the kind of the Hansa. I mean, Hansa itself, Hansa is not an easy option. True. Hansa is a painful, painful thing to go through, and the way that you know you'll be put and kind of dragged out before everybody, and it is a mm -hmm. form of punishment in a way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and sometimes people, okay, so the, the scenario that I know is where a young guy screwed up, did something bad, everyone likes him, everyone kind of wants to shield him, so they'll come to me and say, okay, this guy did this, but you know, we don't want him to take the whole blame, so look, let's just um, fix it this way, and let's put these steps in, but can you help us manage this in a way that he doesn't you know, get dragged through this? Mm -hmm. And when it kind of came out, and this guy, this guy was being forced to write the apology letter himself, this junior guy was uh -huh. being forced by a senior guy to write it. I was kind of like, well, this this is kind of messed up, but uh, you know, you, the the Mitsubishi Motors case, the 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 accident reports that were being kept in the locker, mm. whatever the inspectors came and stuff like that. There is this thing about sometimes if they think they can get away with it, and this isn't just Japan, of course. Right. <laughs> you know, um, to have, the Hansei thing in itself can seem to be, can be seen to be so 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 much of a not so much a punishment, but it's just such a such a pain. It's kind of a burden. It's kind of yeah. a burden that uh, again they'll think, well, look, oh, well, but the, the internal rational for the rationale for this is, we'll manage this ourselves. We mm. don't need to cause trouble. You know, I don't. We don't need to make trouble for ourselves or cause trouble for other people when we can just manage it. 
the problem is, is that when you don't have that accountability and when people try to manage it themselves, often in my experience, things end up getting worse. And That's you end true. up finding out when you're That's doing the, the analysis that the hansei, a lot of hansei involves, okay, here is about one quarter of the way through this disaster when you should have raised your hand. Right. <laughs> and here is the, 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 the three quarter stage where, you know, something blew up. And here is the final stage where finally now we're talking about it and we're trying to fix right, right. it. It's way too late, right? Yeah. And it, it, it is true that things got a little bit too late because people do want to avoid. So there is some accountability there, I guess, in that sense. But the accountability is the need to come through and account for yourself. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting. I mean, it's just such a different mindset. It used to look like a complete just absconding from responsibility. And there are Mm -hmm. plenty of cases, the Nissan, Mm -hmm. uh, or sorry, the the, the, um, uh, Olympus, the Olympus case, all all these big, huge corporate scandals seem to reinforce this idea of, you know, just reckless abandonment of responsibility. And obviously those guys need some hansei, but... Uh. <laughs> yeah, so that's the thing. It, it, it's, the, it's, it's a really nice process, but it isn't always being applied, right? Which is true, which is exactly the same as the U.S. process of suing people and holding people right, right, responsible. Right, exactly, well. that doesn't always work either, right? So. But when it works, I, 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 I myself, I, I think that the, the Japanese approach, I think there's a lot of merit to it as well. Mm-hmm. So yeah, we're, we're, but, but this is the whole thing. When shit happens, when shit goes down, the Americans I know, the New Zealanders, the Australians are like, who who screwed it up? And the Japanese are, how did this happen? And how right. do we stop it happening again? Right. And also, and also, how, we have, I want to say we're sorry. Yeah. Very important they immediately for Immediately want to say they're sorry. Yeah. And I have to stop them doing that. But, yes. <laughs> well, but my recommendation right would be is if you're in a situation and things have been messed up yeah. and a Japanese person is your client or yeah. someone you're working with, you do have to probably want to say sorry. Because well, they, until they hear sorry, they're not going to even right. listen to anything else yeah check, check your legal liability first uh, yeah, and, and, okay. and then say sorry on the floor just to get, get, go all out but all yes right, right. Uh, but yeah well you do have to say sorry even even around that you just have to be careful how you phrase it you, right, can't, exactly. you can't give a complete admission you can't hand them right right a so blank check to sue you, to sue you with, with, exactly in with, any culture which they, yeah. they didn't used to do in Japan this is another thing they did Japanese companies didn't used to sue each other that's true now they do mm, <laughs> and so now you have to be a little bit more savvy little, yeah exactly but you still have to apologize. Right. Yeah, so that's a fine line of how you do that, but I guess that's something that keeps you busy, right? It does. It's a never-ending never ending source of uh, fun and games. <laughs> Man, forget the time limits. These are interesting topics, and I really... Uh, that, that, so that was uh, Isabella 16, 1680. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was a great thank topic. Thank you, Isabella. Thank you for that. Uh, uh, and thank you for letting me swear with Rochelle in an unawkward way. That, that was just a highlight for me as well. So we're going to be back next week for more of these awesome topics, which you decided for us. Uh, So hang around for more Japan business time. Great. Thank you.